Welcome guys, I can't believe we're already so far into the series. This is episode 11 and it's quite a big episode. We're talking about the random room generation. So let's dive straight into it. So in this episode, I'm showing you the algorithms that I use to generate random walls for every run. And honestly, when we get into the details of it, it can sound quite confusing. Maybe also because my algorithm is not the most efficient one. So I'm going to try my best to always explain it as clearly as I can. And to be honest, you don't need to understand like every line of code of this. I think if you understand the general concept and approach that I've used, then you can always tweak it for your own code and your own game. Because there are many ways that you can generate your levels and your rooms. All right, all our levels, they're created by the generator prefab. We have already created our generator prefab and right now it's just creating and scrolling the floor. And today we're extending the generator prefab with new methods that will generate and draw the walls. So the first thing that our generator does is it saves all the layers of a level. And a level is made up of a floor layer, of walls layer, enemies layers, and also layers for pickups like hearts that heal the character. And every level is divided into rooms. When playing, you don't feel when you're leaving and entering a new room, but just for the logic of uh, generating each level, we're always dividing it into rooms. And each room has a height of 30 rows. So then the generator, every time we reach the bottom of a room, it needs to generate a new room and attach it. Creating a room is where the generator does all the hard work. And for Endless Cave, I've used an approach where I divide the creation process in three individual steps. So the first one is simply generating the layer. Today we're only looking at walls, so we're generating a walls layer. And it is generated by saving it in a two-dimensional array that represents the grid. The next step is that it draws the layer, so it will loop through the walls layer. And if there is a, a wall tile, then it will draw a wall sprite. Finally, the last step is simply saving the layer in the generator's layers object. So that means the whole level generation, it is happening outside of the play scene inside the generator prefab. And then we use the play scene only to initialize the generator object. And then we have, we call the setup method, which we're already doing right now to create the floor. And then every frame in the game's update loop, we update the generator as well. And then the generator will update the tiles, the enemies, the monsters, and everything that is related to the level. Now let me show you how I'm translating these ideas into code. And we're doing this in the generator file. So let's set up a subsection for all the layers. And we create a method called create room layers. This method will be responsible for creating all the layers in the level. But today we're just focusing on the walls. And as I've just shown you in the previous graphic, I'm dividing it into three steps where I first generate the walls, then I draw the walls. And finally, I append the, the new walls to the existing walls layer. So let's create another subsection specifically for the walls layer. And we have two methods here the generate walls and the create walls method. So the generate walls is for creating the data structure for the new walls layer and the create walls method, we use it to draw the wall sprites. For every layer, we're using two dimensional arrays where the first dimension, it's an array of all the rows in the, in the level. And then the second dimension is each row containing all the tiles. That's why we're first looping through a certain number of rows. I've chosen this number to be one and a half of the total number of rows in one room. And then for each row, we generate another array and this array contains all the tiles on this row. And for, for the game, the first four rows, they need to be empty so the player cannot get like stuck immediately on a row. 
and then after the fifth row we're gonna start creating a row of walls every third row so there's two rows empty where there's no walls at all and then one row with randomly generated walls let's start out by generating the empty rows first because they're much easier so we create an array for the row and then we loop through the total number of columns in the room because the columns is exactly the number of uh, tiles that are on this row. So we loop through these columns and then we just add an, a not wall object to the row. In other words, by setting the is wall flag to false, we tell the generator that this is an empty tile. If we only add empty tiles to the row, that will make the whole row an empty row. So now we're getting to the complex part. The generate wall row method is responsible for generating randomized rows of walls. And it is randomized in the sense of how many gaps there are and where the gaps are on the row so the player can continue further down into the level. So for Endless Cave, I've decided that there has to be a minimum one gap, of course, but maximum two gaps. So we create a gaps array and we get a random number, which is one or two from this helper method. And then we loop that number of times and we add gaps to the gaps array. For each gap, we save its index in the gaps array. And also we define its width to two tiles. Then the generator decides where is the first gap on this wall row. And for that, it takes a random number between index one and the index that is one less than the total columns per row. When we build this gap, we also need to save some additional information, which is why we have the build gap method. And we're gonna look at this very soon. So already before we decided if we have one or two gaps on this row. So now we check if there is a second gap on this row, we repeat the process that we did for the first gap. However, for the second gap, we must also check that it does not use one of the tiles that is already taken by the first gap. And once we have found a new spot for this second gap, we can use the build gap method to build the gap with all the required data. At this point, the wall row is successfully generated and we return it. Before we can continue in the generator, we have to create this helper method for creating random integers. Calculating random integers in JavaScript is a very common function, so I'm not gonna go into details here, but if you're not used to this function, I suggest you check some Stack Overflow posts. Now let's look at this build gap method in the generator. First of all, to build a gap, we need to pass it the x tile coordinate in the grid and we need to know what is the width of the gap. In addition to this information, we want to save for each gap an array of the empty tiles and an array of all the taken tiles. Now you might think that the taken and the empty tiles are the same thing, but actually the taken tiles are more than just the empty tiles because if we add a second gap to the same row of, uh, of the wall, then we want to make sure that the two gaps are not touching each other. There has to be at least one other wall tile between them. So the taken tiles are like the reserved tiles that any other gap must not occupy. So now that we know the gaps on the wall, we can finally build the whole row using the build row method. We pass the array of gaps to this method. And then first we build the whole row as if it was all just walls. And then we check the gaps and we delete the walls where there's supposed to be a gap. Each row is an array of objects and each object represents a tile. So for each tile, we want to know the X coordinate, the T X coordinate, and we want to know the frame for the sprite sheet. And in this case, it's a frame for the wall and we flag it as a wall or not as a wall. In the first loop, we flagged all the objects as walls. And now it's time to loop the gaps and override that where there is a gap. So we set the is wall flag to false. And now we have successfully generated a random row of wall tiles and gaps, and we can return this array. 
at this current point, our generator knows exactly which row is walls, where are the walls and where are the gaps. However, it just saved it as a data structure of arrays and objects. Now we want to use the create walls method. We pass that uh, two dimensional array to this method and then we just draw the sprites where each wall tile is supposed to be. This process simply means that we loop this two dimensional walls array and we check each tile object. We take the TX coordinate and convert it into a pixel coordinate on the canvas. We do the same thing for the TY coordinate. And then we check if the is wall flag is set to true. And if it is set to true, we draw the sprite for the wall tile and we add the sprite to the object. When we have looped every single tile in the walls layer, we return the walls layer again because now it also includes the wall sprites. All that's left to do now is create the room layers as part of the setup method. And if we refresh the browser window now, we can see what kind of layouts our generator is coming up with. As you can see, every time I refresh again, the layout is different, it is randomized. Unfortunately, right now we just see about half of the room because our player is spawning in the center of the screen. So let's fix that real quick by going into the scenes folder and opening our play scene file. And in the create player method, where we create the player, we change his spawn position to be inside the first row at the top of the screen. Right now there is no collision yet, so these walls are just images and not really acting as walls in the game. And also, it's, we're only creating one room and after it, the camera scrolls down, there is no new room appearing to continue the level. So in the next episode, we will look at how we can generate new rooms every time the camera scrolls to the bottom of the current room. And then after that, we will start programming the collision for the walls. I really hope I was able to explain how the randomized level generator works in my game Endless Cave. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below or you can join my Discord and ask your questions there. Also, please give the video a like and subscribe to my channel for future episodes. And if you like what I'm doing here and you want to support me, the best thing you can do is follow me on Twitter. It really helps me if I can build up a following there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.